we are here and uh this is our special halloween edition of the modeler and i'm dressed like a goober um have this whole little uh, goblin uh elf thing going on just for fun and uh the really great part about my day is that i got to answer the door for the fedex guy a little while ago so <laughs> We are going to get started, and um, today we are just doing a really nice VFX build, uh, focusing on art and some of our new freehand tools available in V9, which is not out yet. Um, it's coming very soon, and so I'm in the beta version. Uh, I have been for the past couple of weeks, if you're just now tuning in. Um, we, you know, I started this tree with not a whole lot in mind. I just kind of wanted to go for it and do something arty and fun for Halloween. And so, um, here's where we arrived. And I put a lot of props in here. Uh, got some quixel bones hanging from the tree. And I put a bloody handprint on there. And I don't know what the story is. I feel like this tree should probably have a backstory or something, but um, I don't know. All I knew is I had in mind that I wanted to grow something off the side of an object, and that's where we're at. So we're going to start from scratch here. I've got another file I'm going to open up. I'm going to go ahead and close this one down, but we might want to reference it um, later. So... Hello, everybody joining in. I wanted to join. I've got a, um, a bird on my shoulder here joining us <laughs> just for fun. Um, Amanda is uh, the birds definitely for you, but I also have some fun fake bones on here and I can't really even show you. But at the end of the video. <laughs> Uh, we'll do some spooky, uh, we're gonna look a little bit at the tree tober, and you guys still have a couple of days left to submit some stuff, and there's prizes for doing that, so I hope you guys join in for that. And so, let's get started on our building. <laughs> Hello! Hey, Thomas! Um, we are actually, uh, I got Thomas in the chat here, and this is actually one of the tree trunks he scanned for us in Poland. Um... It is a European ash, which is actually the same thing as a rowan tree. Europeans call it a rowan tree, and Americans like ash uh, or mountain ash. Uh, there's a slight difference between mountain ash and our mountain, like, European ash, but it's kind of hard to tell, people, most people to tell. Um, all right, so I've got this really cool scan here, and I have brought it in using the... Um, mesh tab here. I just clicked the add button and then I added in the highest and medium and low. They all come in together. And uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of the same that we've been doing. Um, thank you for liking the bird. The bird is my friend too. Um, I don't have a name for him though so if you guys want to name him. Um, <laughs> there we go. All right, so I got a pretty good looking trunk here. I love that it has these little um, extra details in here. And we are gonna use the mesh converter tool, which we've been using the past couple of weeks. We're gonna go to file and then the templates here, we're gonna add our mesh converter and stick it on the mesh. And it gives you a top and a bottom. And on your keyboard, you're going to select the T and then hold down T and place it on the mesh. And do the same thing for the bottom. Grab the, click it, hold down the T and put it somewhere along the bottom. Now, um, I'm not going to keep this mesh in here. I want to optimize it and I want to build it and sculpt on it. So I just want the mesh entirely out of the scene. So I'm going to just convert it to a trunk. Um, so I'm going to put this up as high as I possibly can go. I'm going to switch the screen space here to push the uh, sorry the W key to move it up and down, but if you move it to Q, it will follow along the branch. If you ever get lost in here and you're kind of like wonky and off, you can hit the center and it'll try its best to do that. Um, we've added these easy placement tools and the rest of the stitches and stuff as well. I know you guys have done a lot of that in V8. 
And, um... And thank you guys. You guys have been really overwhelmingly positive. I think a lot of you guys are just being, saying thank you and stuff for that. And we really appreciate that. We are very new to streaming and doing this kind of tutorial in general. It's been a, kind of a learning process, but <laughs> we're here. All right, I've got the top and the bottom placed kind of where I want. I don't have a lot of bend on this trunk, so I don't need a whole lot of dots in here. These um, dots that you see displayed are the accurate spine. And so if you were in like a regular mesh, um, your speed tree mesh has this as well, just for a second here. Um, you can always see your accurate spine by clicking on the trunk and hitting the uh, show hints. And it will show you this accuracy spine. A lot of people don't realize the difference between uh, adding segments to the tree and then like increasing the accuracy. And so these points are ones that will look up. It's... All right, just that little inside scoop there. I'm gonna delete that chunk out of there. And we're gonna go back in here. And then these guys, you can uh, add more or take away if you need them. But for this one, we really don't need it. If I had a curve on this, um, I could add these guys to try to follow it a, a little bit closer. It does kind of create a fold if you put too many in there. So if you, you know, had that many, you're gonna get some errors in here. See the, the mesh is all bundled up. So we really don't want any that more than 10 in there um, for right now. Um, Speechry has employed an elf for many, many years now. And we actually, um, one day at GDC, uh, I did the last day dress up like a wood elf, and it was hilarious. And I think we had more just people goofing around and hanging out in the booth with us just because of that. <laughs> uh, it was pretty great. All right, I'll just give them a second to catch up there. All right, so we want to make this blend kind of pretty up here so that we have a tileable texture. And right now, it's not pretty. This mesh has a lot of color on it. And um, one of the things I didn't show you when I brought it in, but you can do adjustments before you send it out. So I brought the max down because it was a little bright. I boosted the saturation because I really liked the stripe. Um, if you put something in there that's uh, either heavily not uh, delighted or has like a feature in there, you will have a harder time blending the pieces. But for this one, I just was like, hey, let's go for it. Um, There we go. All right, so uh, you wanna get your PBR in good shape before you actually send out your trunk. I've got the normal contrast just a little bit and I don't have the gloss on very high. Um, so let's work on the blend a little bit. I'm gonna click the pink guy again and we are going to work on that blend. I like almost always put it on default one or two and I don't know if that's a bad habit but they always kind of work, so uh, why work harder than you need to? Um, I stretch that down. I think I want a little bit more of a blend area here, so I'm gonna move the B again. I'm just gonna kind of push it up a little bit, and that way I can have more space down here to grab to blend. Um, we're gonna grab it again, and I am changing out the blend range right now just to make it a little longer. And this piece in here, you can display it by itself. Um, one thing you wanna keep in mind is this is just a texture overlay. So if you stretch it out, you can go over that amount and that will be not a great blend. So you wanna make sure it fits in the space that you've given it. Um, it kind of fades out there. And so that should be a pretty good one. If you can, it's probably really hard to see. There's actually a faint line where it's getting cut off right now. So I'm gonna back that up a bit. All right, and then I'm gonna put it back on the um, backgrounds and blends. And it's doing okay. Let me see if shifting it a little bit or repeating the thing kind of helps it out a little bit. And um, I don't know, I'm pretty okay with that. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and send it out. Um, I'm making a kind of big texture for this. So I'm gonna put it in 8K. Um, 
and there we go. We're just going to convert this straight to a chunk. So we're going to hit the second to last option and we are going to send it out to our folder. I took it off the screen for a second because it got to find my folder. <laughs> um, and I want to show you my setup here because it's kind of important to keep this organized or at least in my opinion. Um, I like to keep the bark in one folder, the leaves in one folder, and my mesh in one folder. And for this one, I'm using some mega scan props. And so I put all my spooky props in one folder. Um, in here, I have a buddy handprint and the tombstone, which I think is actually like some sort of Japanese thing. I'm not really sure if it's actually supposed to be a tomb. And um, the rock that I was using in there. And so we are going to put this in our bark folder. This is going to be our um, spooky bark one. Gonna replace it just because I had built, I was a uh, build these guys out and then just rewrite over everything. And there's our new guy. And so we want to hide our original mesh now and we can really do whatever we want now. Um, inside that folder, if you notice, it's, it's going to bring in your bark for you automatically. So you don't have to do that. Um, what I did for the handprint is just on the chunk. I took it into Photoshop and I put that um, decal on each of my textures. You just want to make sure your gloss and your normal are correct too. Um, so I did that one for kicks and giggles and that one looks like, I named it <laughs> spooky park. Yikes. I probably should have renamed that, but, um, yeah, it's kind of fun. Um, it's a lot darker than the one that I sent out. I think I might've done that. All right. So now we have an ugly tube and we want to make it an actual tree. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a few more segments to it. You could set the segments. I kind of forgot to show you that, but you can set out a target segment count from the actual exporter. Um, and this guy is just kind of the freedom there. I don't think we actually need as many as not as bad as I thought. As I thought. It's apparently hard to talk with a fake uh, orc whatever this is. <laughs> I definitely thought about wearing fangs, but I don't want to do the whole video with a super lisp. Um, all right, I am modeling in the high resolution mode and we're going to get most of the tree figured out in the generator mode before we go and do our fancy editing and uh, fun stuff like that. I'm going to turn hints off because they're kind of annoying. We're gonna just start shaping this guy. First thing I wanna do is kind of get him about up to what height I would like the tree to be. Rowan trees are actually kind of small. Um, they are notorious for being able to grow and survive in some cool mountain spots too. Um, so I'm just gonna type in an absolute number for this part. Um, it's really good to make your trunk an absolute length because this person of the parent comes from the um, tree node. And if you ever wanted to uh, resize your tree node, you would upset your whole tree um, if you wanted to change that. So we're just going to make this about 30 feet tall and we're going to have uh, an extension on it. So it might end up being a little bit shorter, but we'll figure that out as we go. I'm going to kind of make it as fat as I would like for it to be. And it's not going to be very, very fat. And we're going to go ahead and start giving it some shape. Now the Displacement should be pushing out according to the map that it sent out. And I am just doing, um, actually probably don't want to twist my texture too much. Um, I'm using the shape displacement and I'm pushing the scale down so that my bottom will be kind of, uh, I don't know what the word for that 
irregular. And I am going to Oh, it's because I don't have the height map loaded in for that one. It needs to be on the actual height map. That's why my displacement wasn't showing up. Um, I think I sent one out earlier. There it is. <clears throat> Took me a second to find it. Okay, so I have my displacement set to the material, um, so it's looking in the height map here. You guys know that there is also a window for displacement, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, under assets and then displacement. There's this little tile bar here um, for a map. You can use either one, and when you send it out, you can tell it to use either the height map or the this area for displacement. Um, right now, if you wanted to put it in here, it would be because you want to adjust the brightness or smoothing. But most times, um, if you're using the converter, you don't really need to do any of that. So I just send it to the material bar. And <laughs> just checking to see if you guys are there. All right, we're going to give this guy some shape. And um, first thing off the bat, I'm going to give it a little bit of shape down here at the bottom. Um, I like to sink the tree a little bit because it's going to go underneath the ground, but on this one we're going to put it on a rock, and so I'm not going to bother with any of that. We're going to um, push out the flares on the bottom just a little bit, maybe pinch them a little bit and push them up. And we're going to start giving it some actual definition. And the more polygons I have in here, the more I can... Um, get some of that details like on the original mesh there was um can i take a look at that there's all these cool little uh, knots and bumps and stuff so it can do a little bit of that but um for our purposes i really want to know what happened to the tree or like what i was thinking when i was doing that i was just kind of like spooky wolf of blood on it um, so first thing first is if you wanted this tree to not have a repeat of the special decal, um, you could go in and fix that. I'm going to have so many branches up here that I'm not going to worry about it. It's just going to cover up that extra detail, um, which I guess is technically cheating, but we don't want to waste time where we don't need to spend it to make it, uh, blend on the way up. Um. I'm going to add just a little bit of fine detail in there, and then I'm going to turn it down a little bit towards the top. Um, I don't know, just doing some funny curves in there just for fun. Um, and we're going to go ahead and start adding our big branches on. Now, I kind of used um, this tree as a reference. Um, I wanted to make a really bendy one. Um, Rowan trees are very... Uh, symmetrical circling um, build up there and so I'm going to use shape control to make the upper canopy. I'm going to add our big branches um, just using the template again. I'm just going to go to branches and just pick the big one. Um, they all sort of start in the same area so what I'm going to do is actually push these up a little bit and um, push them away from the top. I'm using first and last. And that should give us a thing, uh, a bit of a crumb. Um, the default that that was on did not have the extend parent on, so I'm gonna go ahead and extend it. And it's a little bit too tall now. I'm just gonna kind of bring it down just a little bit and I'm gonna make the end of the I'm grabbing the um, the main trunk and I'm grabbing the end of the radius to make the extension smaller. Um, I want it to taper off a little bit. And I want these guys, I want the curves. I don't want so much height up here. I'm gonna bring it down. So um, a quarter to the trunk, I'm gonna max that out and then I'm just gonna bring the end of the, the top of the trunk down. And so that made, because everything's kind of up there, the front, we're gonna end up doing something like that for the structure. Now, right off the bat, these are a little two structures. I'm gonna to go to the gen mode and that template had an interval. Um, I typically use interval for everything on the bottom part of the tree. And when I get up to the twigs, I'll switch it to phyllotaxy. 
Um, but again, bilotoxine interval and bifurcation are very, very common and what you'll use like 90% of the time. Um, I just want to shake it up a little bit. So I'm going to add in some variance to the rotation, some variance to the position. And I'm going to make sure that the bottom ones are a little chunkier. I'm going to um, go ahead and make these guys as big as I can go. I'm going to hit clamp to parent so I don't go over the size of the trunk. And I'm going to add a lot of variance in here and then bring the top uh, branches down a little bit. Kind of make these guys a little smaller towards the top. Um, to this, you know, we've been making a lot of our trees. Um, we've been just starting with the VFX one and then we've taken it down to the game one. We are not going to do that for this one because this one is a special just Halloween tree and we're going to um, try to pick that back up next week, but we won't be making a games version of this one. Um, just so I can move on to teaching you. I actually forgot. You'll have to get Amanda to ask me what I'm doing next week because I have not even looked. I don't even remember what our schedule is. <laughs> so, um, so here we go. Um, Y'all are making fun of me a little bit. Not in our stream. There we go. And that. All right, we are going to go ahead and grab our spine and adjust the angles a little bit. Um, I'm still doing everything. Um, there's a curve on this guy. I am just going to make the ones on the bottom a little bit more flat out. And then we are going to start structuring everything so that we can turn uh, shape control on. The next thing we're going to do is add our um, branches. I'm going to use big branches again. And I dropped them on the tree. There, there you go. Um, the thing that I want to keep repeating in this tree is that I want these guys to have a lot of shape. Um, a lot of noise and kind of full out. So one of the things that we want to do here is put these guys on interval and um, the rowan tree itself actually has a, sort of a planar. It's not quite as full there, but I don't want as many of the down branches. And so I am going to um, change up the interval. I'm going to do count three and then put a plus or minus one in there. So every so often I'll have an extra branch and um, I'll end up doing some pruning probably. And I'm going to see if I can get some more towards the center. All right. And I'm not really going to do a whole lot lengthwise with these guys because I'm about to turn on shape control and I am going to add another set of branches. I'm going to add little ones this time. And um, I don't quite like how those are, I'm going to just kind of use the spacing they gave, but really, really mix up the position of them. Position will help a lot. Um, and these guys, I am um, also not doing anything with gravity yet. That's another thing to keep in mind. Um, I'm probably going to want a few more of those. And then our next stage is going to be uh, one more main branch, and then we're going to have a little branch. Um, rowan trees have little tiny twigs and then sets of opposite leaves. And so we're going to add all of those guys onto the tree just so we can get a feel for what they look like. Um, and I just have it on interval again, and I don't need as many of these. I'm just kind of doing the same thing position-wise, just shaking it up. And I'm going to extend these guys. And right off the bat, um, if you were looking at your tree and you are about this far away and you click on those little guys and you're like, oh, where are they? When I'm not clicking on them, everything's just too skinny. Um, so you have all these polygons in here. Why spend them on something that is that big? So we're going to go back a couple of steps and we are going to... Uh, beef up everything. <laughs> I'm gonna take that skin turb of the main ones and actually make these guys 
a little chunkier. Um, and a suggestion for using Discord. We definitely talked about using Discord. Um, I definitely like Discord <laughs> a bit. It's pretty fun. Um, the interesting thing um, about doing the discard is I would need to hear you guys pretty well. And the funny thing that you guys might not realize about me is that I'm actually almost deaf. <laughs> and um, we should definitely try it in the future. I'm totally down. Um, and we do have, uh, someone mentioned that it'd be really cool to do a, like, extreme proportion fantasy tree. Um, that's definitely coming up on the schedule. We have lots of people asking for that. Um, okay. So, I have a really ugly tree so far. That's okay. I'm going to turn on shape control and go ahead and get, and the reason I'm doing it here and not on the tiny twigs, I did kind of forget to beef up. I can't, apparently talk and keep going at the same time, but I'm just going to put these on a one and should be pretty bigger. And I can see these guys not quite so well, so we'll just keep doing what we were doing. Um, I'm grabbing the end of the radius so that the extension stays nice and meaty. I'm going to add just a bit more variance in here and maybe kind of favor the outliers so I guess it gets some skinniness in there and then we are going to properties and we're going to grab i'm doing this from the um second set of branches and go to shape and we're going to turn on our shape control one of the first things you want to do before you ever turn shape control on before i go there is make sure you're not swimming in polygons like i already have a pretty big tree here and if i turn on shape control um it's going to do all the calculations within the circle but um, because of the preset numbers that are in shape control, you might have it really big and you don't want to crash your computer by suddenly creating more foliage than you need. So I'm just going to take a quick second to, um, optimize everything. We're going to go to scribe mode and see, I just have way too many polys. If you're back here and you see black, um, I switched to medium. Just a second there. Um, you don't need all these guys. And so we're going to grab uh, those. We're going to go to segments. Now, a lot of people... Um, a lot of people just like to build with all of the segments in the world. And I completely understand that. It's sort of like Play-Doh effect or you want all the goodies and then you want to see how to take them away. Um, but I guess a good, a better practice is to like limit yourself along the way everywhere in the tree, just so that you don't end up spending more money than you need to. Um, I'm just going to turn optimization on for these because we are going to add some noise in there and then that will just take the segments where I need them. And then usually on the twigs and stuff, I need to drop the radial curve down. So they just don't have that many, um, having a relative of three is going to ensure that I don't have any weird, uh, blocks like this one here. Um, a little bit too small. I have it on relative two. I'm just going to make sure that there's always a couple in there so that it's nice and round and detailed. I don't need that many in the weld, so I can always turn that down, um, for those guys. Uh, these guys, you can multi-select these guys and just go ahead and hit skin tab and turn the welding off. Um, anything in the upper canopy, we just don't worry about because you're not going to be that close to it. Um, these little guys up here, I'm going to do the same thing. I have multi-selected on. I am going to put on just a little bit of optimization and I'm going to grab the radial curve and bring it down towards the end. So I've got a nice area where they're connected to the tree. And then once they get small enough, they do kind of get into a rectangle and that's perfectly okay. Um, this one is our main branch and so i want a few more radial segments and um i'm working in high mode right now you are going to drop segments as you go high medium low resolution if you're making 
a tree that you want multiples for. And so, um, we want to make sure we're not getting a triangle like this one. Like, ooh, gotta get rid of that. And so we're gonna beef up these guys just a little bit. Um, I'm just gonna add a couple of the the absolute segments and um, maybe just a few more radial segments. And we really don't need them all the way down the branch. And we really don't need all the leaking segments either. Again, I'm adding optimization, um, which is somewhat uncommon for a VFX tree because it's usually a game thing, but I use it all the time. All right, um, these welds have probably enough for what we're doing because we're gonna stretch those out in a second. Um, okay, back to shape control. It's hard to stay on task. <laughs> um, all right, I'm zoomed back. I'm ready to turn it on. I'm gonna grab the big branches and put it on spears. And that's what I'm talking about. I just drastically increased it. It's really ugly. I want, want to turn on hints in order to see my spears. And now you now you can click the tree and see the circles it's created. Um, the thing that I want to do with these guys is swoosh them towards the center of the tree because it's a very arc um, shape. And I also want to push them up um, position and the size of them might be too large. We're gonna find out as we go. And we're just going to, um, I'm gonna use the absolute size for this first and kind of knock down some of that. And then we're going to position these guys in towards the middle of the tree to get our nice arc shaped things there. Uh, one of the things I wanna do for this top canopy, since I have this extension on, I don't want a short, weak crown here. I'm going to take the curve and say at the top of the tree towards the trunk, I want that circle to be a little bit bigger and that's going to help my crown be the right shape. Now, um, you're seeing all of these guys uh, reach out on the bottom and that's not necessarily a look I wanna do. I wanna push the distribution so that the curves, uh, <laughs> distribution, takes everything within the circle and it divides it up. Um, so on this one, I have four sections. And so the distribution would be for this little twigs, I have it leaning towards a short distance on the little twigs and just tries to fit everything in there. And so I kind of want a little more balanced look going. And um, there we go. So that's enough to get started for the thing. The next thing we want to do, I'm sure I, we talked about our little twigs we would be adding as they're showing me all of the failed welds. Um, I can turn hence off for right now. All right. But um, it's so ugly now. We'll get there. Uh, don't give up on me yet. Some of you jumping in might be like, wow, why are they making that? Um, okay, so we want to add another set of little twigs here. These are going to hold our leaves. Um, on this tree, I never actually added the leaves because, um, I don't know, spooky or bare. Um, so we're going to add some little twigs. And I... Again, added them to the tree, didn't mean to do that. Before I turn, before I add them in, I'm just going to click that um, little trick. I'm going to go to spine and I'm going to say stop shape control. I don't really want these to contribute to the final shape. I'm going to add them on and you can really see where they're like super, super bare. I'm going to put these on interval. I'm Actually, I'm going to switch this to file taxi and put these guys as opposite um, just so that I have them coming out the same size of the branch. I'm going to decrease the distance between them so there's enough in there. And I'm um, going to shorten them just a little bit. Um, 
And so those are what would actually hold the fronds there. I shortened them a little too much. Um, when you get in the upper canopy like this for the small twigs, uh, a lot of times it is better to use the absolute value over the percent parent if you have like an exact structure you're trying to create. So a lot of times it ends up being um, absolute combo of the two up in the upper canopy. Um, and those are just really long and down here and shorter towards the top. And so I'm going to get rid of this curve here and actually take this curve according to the trunk and make these guys a little smaller towards the bottom. We're going to knock out a lot of these anyways. The second thing I want to do is get rid of these um, awkward low hanging ones. Um, I'm going to do that by grabbing the shape of these guys and we're going to add a force to the scene. I'm going to add a planer. And those are kind of more stretched out and they'll keep them off the ground a little bit. Uh, one of the immediate things that people do in their building is they have these shapes with the big trees and these branches are far too prominent. Um, you can just kind of tell that it's simple. It doesn't look like a tree yet. And so we are going to add some secondary big branches on these guys. And these will not be part of shape control either. So we are going to add some branches just with bifurcating. And just that simple addition helps break up the fact that you've got curves and everything to add on there. And we're also going to add broken pieces pretty much everywhere over this whole tree. Um, we are going to, um, these are just too fat at the top. So we're going to kind of get rid of those. And um, I feel like I was fat shaming the tree. Not intentionally. Um, you'll see it's in the shape control and I don't actually really want it to be. And so I'm going back to spine and I'm clicking to turn it off. And then that way I can control those guys. Um, right off, I'm just going to kind of make them uh, go smaller towards the top of the tree. Just to get rid of those big guys up there. And then I don't really want um, them on the end in this case. This is sort of all about filling in this main structural area here. And so I'm just going to kind of push them down. And so we really don't need that many of them to give me a pretty good effect. I kind of want them to be uh, as chunky as they possibly can be. <laughs> just because the other ones got kind of small. And I'm going to do the same thing there. Going to beefing up the bottom part of the branch. There we go. Got a little more spindly things going on there. Now, oh, um, these guys are looking pretty long on the bottom. I guess it's that last set. And so what I might do is go to spine and I'm just going to prune out some of the ones that are pointing down. So it's downward prune. Um, it's going to help me knock out these guys. So I'm going to just kind of turn it on a little bit. And I don't want to lose any towards the top part of the tree, so I'm just going to grab that and say according to the chunk and kind of put a zero in here. <laughs> and a zero in there, and I did it a little too aggressively. There we go. That helped a bit. I'm going to just kind of copy this curve, and we're going to do the same thing for one tier. And we'll keep it. We'll see where we get um, all right, so now we are going to start leaning and getting everything into place. Uh, one thing that I did not do is add any noise to that. I just kind of wanted to see the overall tree shape before I started adding anything. Um, so we're going to go to spine again. Um, if you're new to speed tree, I don't think the people joining us today are. I think that there are a lot of, uh, users in there. Um. The majority of the shaping that you do on your branches are going to be in spine and skin. Um, a lot of people struggle with how to find something. If you know what it's called, you can type it in here and it'll bring it up. And you can save a favorites as well. You can click any one of the branches here, the generators, and grab it and rename it really fast um, if you're trying to keep track of it. 
um, by typing up here. Um, for the most part, I don't really need to rename these. All right, so we're gonna start adding our shape, spine, and we're gonna go to noise. I'm adding late noise for this. Um, if you plan to have anything interact, uh, which I do, but not with that section particularly, you don't wanna use the late noise, you want to use early noise. Um, and I just wanna give this more of an arty bending winding, whatever we're going to call that, artistic oomph, I don't know. Um, one of the things I like to do on these guys is um, grab the late noise and give it a lot more towards, give it a little bump up here towards the top. You have a, um, this is new in V9, uh, we added a jink, which is basically picking um, points where there's a bend and straightening it out a little bit. So you get that natural, um, i just put it on just to show you. It's doing a lot of calculating right now because I do have the shape control on. Um, one of the things that you can do while you're building this mode is switch to low mode real fast. And it's kind of got lost too many polygons there. <laughs> I'll go the segments really fast. I'm just going to make sure that the radial, radial segments and low don't lose. There we go. Now we can keep our shape. Not too bad. Yeah. So I'm going to move to modeling in I was trying to back up because I had some questions about multiple nodes. Um, I guess the first thing I want to say is that whenever you're building, the best practice is to make it as in few generators as you possibly can, just for keeping it uncomplicated and also... Oh, thank you. Um, I think I misunderstood the question. Um, I'm letting Danny answer everything because it's like delayed. Or I'm a, I'm a bit ahead of you guys. I guess he's explaining the difference between the generator mode and the node mode. Um. Oh, I think I lost some of you guys on Twitch. I'm going to see if I can repair that really fast. I think I still got you on Facebook and... Let's see. I'm going to keep going and see if I have like back up, but I think that it fizzled out a little bit there. All right, back to putting shape on these guys. Um, I moved it to the low mode so that we can keep going. And then we are in spine and I'm gonna show you guys the jink. I turned it on a little bit. Um, it's on absolute two and you can add how many you want to make sure you get in there. Um, in this case, I don't think, I think I want more of a rounded shape. And so I'm going to use uh, Path. Um, path lets you draw the immediate shape just by hand. And so um, I'm going to add some more swoops. I didn't like that very much. Give it some flair. It looks like a music note or something. Um, and then we're going to turn that on and you'll see everything kind of do the same thing. And one of the things we really want to do with path is break it up a lot. And so we're going to add variance in the offset. So I have that repeat pattern in there. You never really want to repeat it right on itself. So we're just going to add a little bit of variance in there. And I think we could get away with a little bit more. One of the things I did uh, with this tree is I have it growing on the side of a cliff. And so I went ahead and I leaned it. And I'm going to spine. And I'm changing up the start angle just a little bit. And I'm also going to push it back up with the gravity. 
And then I added a bunch of noise on this guy, um, on the actual trunk. I'm gonna add some late noise again. On this one, I did more of a curve like this where I have it all towards the bottom. Uh, so it's doing a lot down here. I'm doing all these as procedural edits. If you want to skip all this and go into the freehand mode, you could. Um, I just find it a lot easier to make fewer adjustments there. I kind of want to turn the late noise up so that I have this so straight up there. Um, so we're getting, we're getting spookier here. Um, we're going to hide this. It's going to be sunk into the side of the cliff anyway, so don't worry about that so far. Um, I really don't have anything juicy going on on the trunk, so I'm going to take a second and do that. Um, I just added... Probably going to get a high for this. I'm going to just turn on the top off the trap of the tree for a second. Turn off that guy too. Okay. I had a question about, um, I can, I finally get what you're saying now. It took me a second. Um, adding those extra generator modes off of the main one. Um, this one is set to do, I've got like a radius and I've got a percent variance in there. But, um, if I want these to be all relatively the same size, um, I can control it a lot easier if I have a second set coming off. I guess it's between these two here. So on this one I had 0.6 with a little bit of variance in there and that's going to be like the main shape of the whole tree. Whereas these big branches, I made them really big um, coming off of and hide them for a second there. Just so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, so these are sort of holding the structure of everything in the end. And then these guys are more like a decorative. I lost them because I pushed the radius down at some point. I don't know when I did that. Um, but I'm crazy sometimes. Um, yes. It's basically just for when you have drastically different um, shapes. Like if I want to keep these thick, but still have them mixed in. Um, I can try my best to do that with one generator and I would do that all with variants. So if I wanted to have drastically different shapes in the radius, I would have to carefully go through each level of curves and you know drop them down on the end or uh, you could use the that's the radius uh the actual variance in there um and i did that a little bit when i favored the outliers on that one section um it kind of pushed it to have more big ones and more really skinny ones and then you got a couple different like cohesive if you want sections to stay there at the same size and i hope that clarified it i feel like i didn't explain that very well um, hopefully it will, we're just going to keep using the same techniques as we go. Um, I also forgot to switch out this bark. I don't really want the bloody bark on the top. I'm going to put it back on the main bark. Um, which, I think I made a couple of them. The spooky bark. There we go. It'll match a little better. All right, this one I already explained had a big stripe in it, so the blend in here doesn't look as pretty. So you're gonna need to do some work on the welds. Um, these don't look pretty to begin with. We wanna kind of adjust those. So we're gonna go to skin and we are going to spread them out just a little bit. We are going to lower the scale just a little bit and maybe like push them out. You don't wanna go too far out with the offset. Um, I got kind of a stripe thing going here. And on the texture, we're gonna bring that texture out, too far out, and we get a little bit of texture streaking there. It's grabbing it. It's way too much, so I'm gonna do this. Lower it and add less contrast because these barks are really contrasting. You just kind of don't want that. And we'll see if the noise helps mix this up a little bit. And then kind of look at it from far back. 
And I think the color difference there, it probably would be better to have a more solid um, black up on the top, but this will work. I'm going to, real fast, you see that little hard edge right there? Um, not loving that, because this is a detail area. Um, this is a very prominent place on the tree. Then I'm going to grab segments. I'm going to turn off optimization for anything near the top of the branch. I'm just going to put that in there. And second point. Still a little bit crazy there. See if it goes away. I think it's the noise needs to be smoothed out a little bit. I think that's where that's coming from. It's kind of pulling it down far too early. I'm going to go back to the noise and just kind of troubleshooting that as we go. Um, then I grabbed that and I added late noise. And y'all remember I added it all the way early. I'm going to just add a second point in there. I'm going to keep the noise there, but I'm going to taper it off a little bit better. And that way I don't have that sharp angle. Not really what I'm going for. Um, the second thing I'm going to do is turn on smooth. And that's going to help those elbows look a little bit more natural. I'm going to kind of add some turbulence in there as well. And we are getting a little bit more tree-like. Um, <laughs> Hi, Austin. <laughs> I've never called you that in your life, but hello. <laughs> um, I'm glad that the Twitch seems to be back and happy. All right, we are shaping up this now and we want to start. Um, so we added displacement on the trunk, but we want to go ahead and add some displacement on these main branches too. I'm just going to go bump it up a little bit. Um, I don't have a whole lot of polygons in here. I'm going to add some fine detail. There's the bottom. I don't really want it on the ends. And I'm going to add just a few more segments in there just because it's looking a little sad. There we go. Now, one of the things that we are going to start doing is um, adding the same noise pattern. Going to kind of increase the frequency and the turbulence in the uppers as well. And um, just looking at it right here, we want to still break up the shape. And so one of the things we can do that is by adding breaks. Um, I don't really want to make break the main branch, but I'm going to add some breaks in here. We're going to go to spine and give it a percent of breaks. And I don't really want any breaks towards the top of the tree because it'll mess up my extensions. And so I tend to make sure that's off on the trunk. I just say trunk and I grab a point there and then I put a zero on the end just to make sure we don't get... I like the, the crown to be kind of full. I don't know if that's a personal preference or whatever. Um, another thing we're going to do is add some lumps. Um, just to bump those out. I am going to be sculpting on this, so I don't want to go too crazy or anything. But the lumps, which I added one on, it's on the other side of the tree. I'm going to turn it around. I'm just going to add like a couple of them. Um, I'm going to kind of push them up towards this one big main section here and push them back down. There we go. So they're kind of like all in the same spot and that's okay. I'm just gonna, and if you're gonna do a lump, you might as well make it pretty prominent. I'm gonna just offset those guys and kind of make some variance in there. So they're all a little different and that will help. These guys will help a lot on the second tier as well. Sometimes I just copy this guy and kind of concentrate it more towards where you can see it. So I'm going to just move the position of this down towards the bottom a little bit. I actually think I'm going to put these instead of absolute. I'm just going to see, put it on bifurcation and it's going to put it on the elbow for me and it adds a nice little realistic bump thing going on there. And so now we finally have some good tree shape going. Um, I feel like this is this one got a little awkward up there. I'm just going to bring this. I think we did that and I didn't do it enough or maybe some of the random rural there. Got it. Um, 
the radius up there. Um, just gonna make them a little smaller towards the top. There we go. Let's chunky. And then I kind of got a little outliners there. I want some the big main branches to be pretty beefy. Um, those extra ones that we added, I feel like I'm not getting them close enough. There we go. I'm gonna make some of these guys really short towards the inside of the branch. Just take the length. And according to that big branch, I'm going to use that curve to kind of bring them down. And then you'll see what that does in the big scheme of things. I meant to add, we're going to be long on this tree today because I definitely am not very far. So we'll probably go over four. And that's okay. We're just going to keep building because happy Halloween. Um, <laughs> There we go. Let's see how we're doing on the rest of the tree looking. We got lots of things going on here. Um, we are starting to look nice and gnarly. I don't have a lot of action going down at the bottom. We're going to add some roots. This is just a decoration template. If your roots ever don't show up um, when you add that template, um, you are going to make sure that the first and last is set right. So that is set on a pretty generic radius. And some, a lot of times if you're on the wrong size trunk and it adds it on, then they won't show up. Um, so just make sure you have enough room in your first and last. And on this guy, I am going to push them. This bottom part of the tree is going to get sunk into the rock. And so I'm just going to ignore it for right now. I'm just going to kind of put them relatively... Sometimes it jumps and it's annoying. Um, I'm going to make these guys really big. Because they're going to go on the side of the tree there. And then I'm going to change the start angle of these guys. Um, they are kind of up and out. Um, use gravity a little bit and kind of push them down towards the top. All, right, all that will matter more once we get the sh shape of the thing on there. The weld is horrible on this. So we're going to go and fix that. I'm going to just make a lower scale, not at all. I'm going to make the top scale kind of blend it out just a little bit. It just kind of wasn't doing very good for me. There you go. And... We're doing okay. We're going to see what it looks like in the end um, once we get there. Uh, what I did for the rock was I brought in a mesh. Um, I just used a rock that I'm pretty sure is supposed to be tiny and so it's not super, super high res. Um, and that's okay. So I brought in the mesh and I brought in the rock's texture, which was not that one. I grabbed the wrong one. Um, that's the bone. Did I rename these? No, I could have. It would have been nice. Uh, I brought in some blood and guts earlier because I wasn't sure quite what I was going to do with this tree. And I thought about making a skin tree with guts in the middle of it. And it grossed me out so bad that I chickened out of it. I was like, oh, I can't do that for this. So that was the lack of direction I had. Um, Let's go ahead and select the mesh cutout. And I'm going to add this to the scene as a force object. All you have to do is grab the mesh and drag it into the scene. Um, you can add this by uh, clicking the force icon as well. And it's huge. And that was actually the wrong. That was my tree trunk. I'm going to delete that guy. Pretend that never happened. I'm going to grab the right material. <laughs> I guess there's a slight possibility that I deleted it on accident and I didn't bring it in for this and that sounds like me. I'm going to go back to my spoopy props and we are going to select the rock. Uh, Andy, Andy, I think I read your name wrong, sorry, is asking um, how to load the backup tree if it breaks. 
Um, when you shut down automatically, which also reminds me to hit the save button, um, I like to build with save incremental just because sometimes I go back and this for new users just use save incremental, we'll put a one on it and then that way you have a couple files to go back to. Um, if you crash, it's going to bring you a file that has a little uh, tick mark in front of it and if you, um, one, reopen the modeler, it's going to ask you if you want to open that file. If you haven't, um, I should I show you an example. Sidetracked, but in a good way. It's a good question. Um, it's going to save out. I just have to find one with a crash file in it real fast. Hang on. Okay, I've got one in my folder in, in general, whatever. But the crash file is going to look like this. Uh, it's that temporary file. Um, you can still select these guys. If I double click this, it will try to open it up for me. Um, these will save as long as you open the modeler back up and try to open it. If you have multiple trees open at once, it's only going to give you a crash file for the one in the first slot. And so that's something to be careful of. It, a lot of people like to model with like 500 things open. And I'm not telling you you can't, but the best practice is to close those down and that way you won't lose your file. And uh, I got a question about poly counts. <laughs> Serial murder for the UVL. <laughs> uh, a lot of what I'm trying to cover when I do these builds is actually how to build smartly, I guess. So if you guys kind of follow along with my, my practice there, I think we showed you switching the resolution for sure um, in the cinema one and the ND one. Um, ND one, you shouldn't be having too much of a problem, but there are definitely certain things that text the... GPU a little harder, so this shape control is one of them. Um, you can build your tree and add this on last if you need to use it. Um, anything with something added to the scene, like a force mesh, tends to be a little bit heavier. So. <laughs> so let's see. Um. <laughs> I think so, I like to think so. Um, okay, so we want to add that rock to the scene. I'm going to grab it out of there and just, just make sure I didn't... Is that it? It is! Okay, I've got a rock now, not the trunk. And I had it turned on earlier, so it looks like they're already paying attention to it. I'm just kind of turn it off for a second. Um, if you have a generator selected and you add a force mesh, it's going to automatically turn the force mesh on. So that's what I did just now. Um, totally by accident, but I just to make sure that you guys understood what was happening. Um, we want to go ahead and assign this with the material. Um, so we have it in the scene. We have it to attract, obstruct, and I'm going to put the material on it, which I... Couldn't remember where it was for a second there. I just love finding things on live live stream. <laughs> um, we went to include it in the model, and then it gives us the material option. Um, which I believe we brought in, it was the teeth. You, start with you, this one. There we go. All right, this rock is ugly on that side and that's okay. I'm going to just use this as a prop in the scene, um, but also to kind of hide this is a different rock than I used in the original and I'm okay with that and it looks like it's stretching so this might not be the right texture for it. Uh, I'll just make sure that we are on the right one. 
I should have renamed my... I've got so many props in the scene that I can't keep track of them. Yeah, that's definitely the tombstone. Okay, so I'm on the wrong one here. I want to grab the, I feel like, uh, how big is our speed tree team was asked and we are a very tiny team full of very dedicated trainers that love to romp in the woods from time to time. And oh, in terms of height, <laughs> we're supposed to be funny. I don't know who takes. Oh man, I might be like the shortest person now. <laughs> um, Danny works at Speed Tree. He is our director of operations. He's usually. The guy kind of hanging out in the comments, and Amanda's there with you guys as well. Um, Danny does everything under the sun, uh, but he joined me for our first stream, and it was hilarious. And we couldn't quite figure out how to have two people back on the stream, because the bandwidth is crazy. Um, we probably will have more multi-person streams in the future, where we have more people talking and just hanging out. Um... All right. I'm a bit confused by the textures here. We're going to use this rock even though it's ugly just for the sake of keeping going. It's just matching up and the fact that... Woo! Some of them <laughs> Shame, shame! <laughs> you. Yes, you should feel very bad for that. I'm very biased, but... <laughs> there we go. Alright, what we are doing, um, I, a lot of you guys may not have known this, but you can actually click a trunk and move a tree around in screen space, and it's a lifesaver. Uh, you used to have to do this and set everything up on a zone to move out sections. You can still do that, but... For the sake of time, why not be able to just move it? But what we're going to do is we're going to grab the whole tree. And because everything's kind of heavy, turn it off on there. Oops, I turned my mesh get ready back on. Um, we're going to move this over into the rock. I mentioned that we were going to kind of hide it into the side. And so anywhere along there is fine. Um, we're going to hide it with roots by kind of growing the roots into the rock in order to... Get it today. It's so ugly. Sorry, you can ignore my ugly rock and pretend like it's nice, beautiful rock. That would be great. It's so hard to make things pretty on live stream. Um, so, I got a question from why are you sold out of all of your artwork? <laughs> I'm guessing that is my normal painting artwork. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, just to rant. Is that what you mean? So many people talking on this one. It's great. I'm getting so distracted. All right. We want the roots to hide the bottom of the trunk. And so we are actually going to turn that on as a force. We're going to say that we want it to pay attention to this guy. And um, I had added some other forces in there. And it knocks out a couple of my roots, which makes sense because I'm kind of dug down into the rock. And um, someone's mentioning mega scans again. Yes, definitely take advantage of those goodies. All right, we are in node mode right now. Um, I hit the tab just now while moving. I'm going to switch back and add a few more roots. Um, basically, the rock is totally taking them out. Um, and I only had three on there anyways. And so if I add a few more and like maybe boost the high up just a little bit, 
I'm gonna change up the radius pretty drastically just to give these guys some shape. And maybe kind of... I'm just gonna give myself some length there. I feel like it's, it's just easier to work with. There we go. All right, so now we're kind of hiding a lot better. Now, one of the things we want to do, we did this last week, is grab the forces, and we are going to make it pay a lot of attention in here. And you have something growing on a force or a geometry force. Um, the normal spine noise is actually backed out. You don't want to, it doesn't matter if it's on, it's just not going to listen to it anymore. Since these guys are interacting with the rock right now, we're going to go to forces. And we are going to use the force noise and we're going to make sure that it's hopping on there exactly how we want it. Now, I want these guys to pay attention to the rock right away. And so I'm just going to make sure that they're on as early as they possibly can be. I'm going to kind of follow along the edge of the rock. I'm going to kind of break that up a little bit and then just change the angle a little bit. And now we've got these guys interacting in a nicer way. These guys are going to be on the force as well. We're going to make sure this turned on. And we're going to add some noise and some follow strength. Change up the angle on that guy too. And they're really long and I don't know if they're supposed to be like spidery or what was going on there. But I'm just going to leave it for now. Um, they don't really pop. One of the things I did on the other one was I had a darker version and I just repeated the bark in here and I put a different material on the roots just so that they kind of blended a little better. Uh, I kind of mix in that darker bark just because, Let's see if that looks good. No, we don't like that. That happens sometimes. <laughs> Retract! Retreat! We don't want it. Um, didn't mean to yell into the microphone, sorry about that. Um. Danny's answering the important questions here about where we are supported and we actually I just wanted to add that we have some artists that work all around the globe to begin with. Um. And there's an ongoing joke about how Speechry does not like Antarctica. I don't know how to explain that one. <laughs> we actually really do. I'm sure we do. They just don't have any trees down there, so... Or up there. Um, there we go. I feel like I missed... Y'all were talking so fast, so I'm just keep going. Okay. Now that we've got this guy on our rock, we are going to use a another force. We're going to use a direction force. And um, this is going to... I'm going to use a magnet instead. Um, this is going to help me grow everything out and give it that sort of gnarly windswept swept look. And so I'm just going to grab the magnet, screen space keys. I'm going to push the W and move that up. Again, it's on right now for the trunk because I have it selected. Um, totally okay with that. I just want it on for that. And I think it'd be really cool if we did some extreme lean, which is kind of what I did on the other thing is I just kind of brought it up and over. And I've got these guys. I'm going to have these um, main branches kind of hold the shape and I'm going to take maybe a couple of them and say they can lean out. So I'm going to turn the magnet on for them. Um, and I'm just going to kind of tweak these guys. On the bottom of the trunk, I'm just going to turn the magnet off. Um, a cool look would be to actually do the opposite there and just have these bottom trees kind of pushed away back from it. On the second set there, I'm going to turn the magnet on. And instead of having them fold over the top there. I'm going to turn it down on the top. And I'm going to add some variance in there. And these are going to pull it out if you're using um, 
the shape control, the forces, and the noise will actually pull it out. You, if you're using late noise, we'll pull it outside of that structured look, but we have enough of a structure there to hold the shape that we're going for. I'm going to go ahead and um, I have planar on this guy already. I'm going to turn the magnet on all the way. A little bit less on that top guy. Just don't want to overbearingly push all of them there. And I got some interesting things going on there. So the next thing we are going to do is I'm going to use the bin tool. I'm kind of ready to go ahead and get in our finer details here. So we are going to turn off everything. That's again about not making your computer work harder than it has to. Um, I really don't need the roots in the seam. I'm just going to keep these upper ones there. And we're just going to give this a lot of character by quickly using the freehand mode. This is brand new V9 if you've been watching along. Um, you've seen us use it a lot. Then we're going to just grab that main trunk. If you click it, you should be able to see the bin tool. It looks like this. And I am going to uh, bend this guy softly at first. I'm going to maybe twist it. Kind of do. I went real gnarly in the original. Um, this happens when you bend, like these nice shapes that you had out are going to intersect with each other now. And so we're just going to correct some of that. I'm going to, um, this is all in screen space, by the way. So I'm just going to turn my angle here and I'm able to bring it around. Um, you can hold the space bar down and stretch this out if you need to. Um, but I kind of liked the length we were at. And I want the top of the tree to definitely, remember when we were talking about the crown of the tree, I just wanted it to sit up there nice and happy. And so that's our basic shape there. I can also get in and make, um, by grabbing that slider there, I'm making tighter turns here so we can give it little bumps. Um, you can undo any of these guys by hitting the back. It'll save, I think, 12 of them. And... <laughs> there we go just because i'm editing uh, i got a question from uh jester about my paintings and um i have not been painting as much uh, i've been trying to build up a stack of them so they can all go out at once so i hope i have more paintings out there um paintings my hobby i'm definitely yeah, a tree artist by day <laughs> and my main strength there I just paint when I can when I have time so I appreciate it and thank you for looking and um, I have a lot of fun of it and it definitely correlates to speed tree modeling it's actually uh, one of the funny things I'm just shaping I'm gonna just kind of shape and talk um, one of the most uh, welcoming things I can say to people new to speed tree that are intimidated by the tool and they open it up and they're like, why are these all these boxes in here and things to do? Um, I am not a tech artist by train. I did not go to school for this. I was a f photographer and uh, shooting weddings. And speed tree hired me to take some pictures of bark because we needed some bark libraries. Uh, they were just starting the V8 PBR texture library at the time. And um, I don't know how I got sucked into that, but uh, a few years down the road, uh, I know it was program backwards and forwards, but it's just from diving in and wiggling things. Um, you don't need to be extremely sh smart. This Software is meant to work for you and make them faster and make everything. I don't know if you've ever tried to model something in a 3D software, but um, yeah, I just hope that the software is not an intimidating thing for people. 
All right, I'm back in gen mode. I'm gonna look at the rest of the tree because I did so much editing there that I probably messed up a lot of the upper canopy. And that's okay, I got kind of crazy in there. <laughs> um, and I don't hate it, I'm like, I'm just gonna go with it. One of the things I would say is that these got really, really long at the top and it's just these little twigs reaching out to fill in the circle there. Um, I am just gonna go and call it, but I'm gonna see what this looks like if I turn the shape control off for that let's sew twigs. Now, a lot of times holding the shape in like the three middle twigs is a better way to go about it. Um, I think I can really like lower the length on these now and get it back to where I'm kind of happy with it. I also have like a lot of branches here now, so. I made them teeny, teeny, tiny on accident. I didn't mean to do that quite so aggressively, but. I'm just getting them back up to snuff. They're really long. And I think on this guy, um, I'm gonna put some noise back on them. I don't think I did that yet. It's definitely super weird to try to art and talk at the same time. It's something that I generally like to concentrate on, I guess. Um, I'm just using the curbs here on the little branches to maybe turn the noise off on some of them. So I've got a nice wrinkly worm pattern on some of them and then I've got like less of one. Um, I think that this tree got a little bit bigger than we want. So what I might actually do is go back to the main shape here. Uh, back in shape control, I think I turned hence off. The circles are just a little too big. And so I'm just gonna maybe make it a little smaller just for adjustments. That might've been a little too much. I'm like, I'm on high mode right now. I'm actually doing what I'm not supposed to be doing, but I'm talking as I wasn't really paying attention. Um, ideally, you would be doing this in low resolution and uh, really paying attention there so you're not hurting your computer so much. Um, all right, we are just about to the shape that I had. It obviously, it doesn't match perfectly, but I'm only human. Um, excuse me, only elf. So, uh, the last thing I did was I hung some ropes and I used them as a force mesh and hung some bones in there. I think we are kind of wrapping up our time here, so I might not get to all those pretty details. But I, and the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just add some sculpting in here. Sculpting, sculpting. So, um, I'm going to turn off these guys again. Um, usually I just use focus. I just select the branch and push F. I've been selecting and picking a lot, I don't know why. Um, I'm gonna put it back in high resolution and I'm going to kind of maybe look to scribe mode. We're gonna to go to freehand mode and we're gonna use the displacement tool. Um, one of the things that you can do in here before you sculpt is if you have an area where you want to do a deep sculpt and you need some more polygons, like up in here. I'll change the light so you can see it it's lit. Um, let me go to scribe mode real fast. I'm going to go to the feature vertices first and add a few in here and just do some extra shape down here. I'm going to make a brush really big just because I don't want to add stuff down here at the bottom, like maybe a ridge. And so I can do something like that. And then I'm going to go switch to the displacement tool. I'm holding the space bar down. Uh, when you click the brush, you're going to be able to see the little gizmo. Um, and then these guys are going to let you change your brush uh, size and how it's spreading out. Um, so I can make the fall off bigger by grabbing these circles or I can make the brush smaller. I'm going to do a really, really tiny brush for that with a pretty gentle fall off. And uh, I'm just going to hold the space bar down and I'm going to pop those guys out. 
Uh, I have the strength on pretty low. Eh, it's actually taller than I thought. Um, so, I just wanted to make uh, an extra bump and fun stuff. You can probably hear my computer right now. It is definitely like... Um, you probably want to do this and see what your texture looks like, like that. If you need to cancel this out, you can smooth it back out. So if I got some bad texturing down in there, that will help. I obviously don't want to push this so hard that your texture is just screaming in agony at you. Why did you do that? Um, I'm going to go back and add just a few more. I'm going to have better if you looking straight on at it so it can tell. Make the brush size a little bigger and just kind of add that in. You can't see right now what I'm doing. Oh, I'm on smooth and that's why it wasn't working and sometimes I lose my mind. So <laughs> make sure you're in the right mode first. I'm gonna add subtract. Uh, And now that I've added, I can kind of pump pump that out a little bit. And that's awful. We're going to get rid of it, though. We're going to go back to smooth. OK. And this is part of the reason why I added this on last is that this tends to be a little bit more tedious. It's for people who have something very clear in mind and they want to add, I don't know, a face or if you have a detail on there, like, let's see, there was a really good, um, ooh, that's awful. We'll push that back in. That never happened. Um, something like this where there's like a slit or I'm trying to look for something good to punch out. Just adding different areas there. Always good to kind of keep in mind. I did that on accident, but <laughs> um I switched perspectives. Uh, I was trying to quickly, uh, if you double click and zoom back out, and there's my converter tool hanging out in the corner there. Um, I tend to like get really cramped in. I think this is sort of like a drawing thing where you're working and you're so close that you're not really paying attention to the big picture. Um, so I like to double click and back out every now and again. and. That's pretty fun. I like a little divot that it made and you can do some fun stuff with the shadows and maybe add like a bump up in here. Um, and you might not need the extra detail in there. Just want it to bump out a little bit. Um, someone is asking about the ZBrush workflow. You can 100% sculpt something in ZBrush. Um, I would stick to the bottom two tiers. Like if you want to sculpt a very, very super artistic face and bring that in as an FBX or an OBJ and use our photogrammetry tools to pop speed tree on the end of it, that workflow works really well. Um, we'll probably do a live stream of that later. Um, and for the sake of wrapping up this stream, I know we didn't get all the way to the end. I didn't show you my cool little details or anything, but I'm going to go ahead and say that we are, we made a significantly spooky-ish tree off of the side of this rock. Um, I'm just going to open the, the end one. I just kind of want to explain because I showed you. Take a second. <laughs> there we go. Oh, I forgot I added moss. I just added a couple more 
perhaps in that end one. I think I had a better swoop here. I took out, I just took out a lot of the branches I didn't need. Um, for this, I put in a rope texture and I just used a branch. Um, and branches are actually not connected to the tree itself. I just added them to the scene. I used the screen space keys to move the branch up here. And then I used the branch itself as a force mesh. Uh, that's in there. It's the branches. Um, so this rope is actually climbing on these guys, and that's how I got them to wrap over the branch. Um, and those moved. I probably would tweak that a little bit just to make sure I've got it into place. And these are just some quicksil bones. <laughs> so, um, I did a much slower job of shaping everything and getting everything where I wanted it in that one. So just wanted to go back and assure you that the end tree does does look okay we did we made a completely different tree but that's okay um all right one of the last things i'm gonna do is hop over here <laughs> and i just wanted to say that we still have this tree tober thing going now i'm gonna add it in um this is we're trying to just get people like not uh people do the drawing thing and they pick several of them and try to do all of them um, the goal here is not for you to do all of them but just to enter like one or two and so we haven't had too many takers on it so far but i wanted to show you some of the stuff that we've been making just for kicks and kiggles um we had this really cool one um aaron springer posted it i think like yesterday and it is pretty cool he added ivy over i just love the mounding and everything that he's got going on in there. Um, also the Spoka on the pictures you took. Awesome. Um, so thank you for playing along, Erin. There's some prizes for this. So if you're playing around with our marketing and you just want to make something and post it, just tag us because uh, it could win some free speed tree for this. We've got... Um, This is submitted by Danny, uh, director of operations here at Speed Tree. This is a sea tree. It's got a nice breezy atmosphere. That's kind of fun. Um, I made. Um, we actually do not allow office visits. They have to be made by appointment. So sorry to add that in there. Um, I made an octopus for the beginning of this and then I kind of slowed down. I was going to try to do them all and that didn't happen. Um, the very last one I want to show you is probably the coolest thing I've seen in a really long time. And uh, my boss made it here at Speed Tree. This is done by Michael. And uh, it's crazy cool and I don't even know how, like, he just sprung this upon us last minute. <laughs> Um, kind of switch images here. So hard to grab the images in OBS LED, but like, look at this ridiculous mess. Um, okay, well, this is kind of about making random things in this speech tree that you're not necessarily supposed to, but you can make some really cool things with it. And I just love that we're getting a few people here and there. Um, Amanda just posted a link for you if you guys want to do this too. Um, but there's just a couple of days left in October, and so that's when the contest ends. So if you guys want to win some free stuff and want to make an arty tree, um, check out the trial and maybe play around with it. Or if you already have it, go for it and uh, post a render. Okay. And that pretty much wraps up for the day. And... <laughs> Two more. <laughs> exactly. I feel bad for I. I can't figure out which photo needs to go. Away, so I'll just keep going there. But that wraps up for this week, and we'll see you guys next week. Um, Amanda reminded me earlier that we're doing some sort of bank side thing with a river next week, and so hopefully we'll be back and doing that. And I appreciate you guys for watching, and y'all have a good rest of the day. Happy Halloween.